Hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Joyce, Washington, and we're gonna be working on putting on an LP regulator. Uh, the regulator on an RV, if you have an RV and you are consuming anything that has LP appliances, this would obviously be a stove, uh, your furnace, um, refrigerator, water heater. Some of you may even have an LP generator. There's two types of LP generators. Some of those work with liquid propane. Some of those work with propane vapor. Um, if it's a liquid propane generator, it will have its own separate tank and it'll be noted that way. Um, some of you, if you have an older RV, you might still have some of those little lamps that run on LP. I've got two RVs, a, 50, a 56 and a 73, and both of those still have LP lamps on the inside. Kind of cool, kind of, I'm re redoing those. But today we're gonna be installing a two-stage regulator on a truck camper. Um, the regulator is kind of like, um, I don't know, it's like the foundation that all the LP stuff is built upon, okay? So on the one side, you have your cylinder or your AMSE tank. Now, if you have an AMSE tank, you're not gonna have a two-stage regulator. It's just going to be, well, back that up. It will be a two-stage regulator, but it won't be an auto changeover, okay? According to NFPA, the two-stage regulator is required on all RVs. If you have an RV prior to 77, you may have just a single-stage regulator, and if you do, those need to be changed out to a two-stage regulator. Um, the two-stage regulator, uh, as of April of 77, I believe, all RVs on the road today are required to have a two-stage regulator. The first stage brings down the fluctuating pressure coming from the tank or the cylinder down to 10 PSI, or yeah, 10 PSI. And then the second stage is gonna bring it down to like six ounces. So it'd be, it wouldn't be ounces of PSI, it'd be O oh, ounces per square inch. <laughs> okay, so instead of talking about ounces per square inch and all this kind of stuff, um, there's a direct correlation. It's kind of like um, kilometers and miles and Celsius and Fahrenheit. Well, we can say ounces per square inch and inches of water column. Okay, so there's a correlation between the two. Uh, when we're talking about gas and we're talking about things like that in the industry, not just RV industry, but in the trades, overwhelmingly, they're going to use inches of water column or inches of mercury, okay? So in your RV, your RV is rated for 11, in, 11 to 14 inches of water, inches of mercury, which is the equivalent of six ounces of pressure per square inch, okay? So six ounces, I'm sure it's not PSI per square inch ounces, pounds, P is pounds, so it'd be OSI. I guess I'm just trying to think out what it'd be called. So anyway, what does this thing do? You might see these on your RV. Some of you may already know. So here you have your cylinder or your AMSE tank, and who knows what pressure that tank is under or that cylinder is under. Altitude will affect it, temperature will affect it, the volume that the tank is filled or empty, depending on if you're an optimist or a pessimist, it's either half full or half empty, you never know. Uh, so how much pressure, how much liquid is in that tank is going to affect the pressure. Um, temperature, the sun, all these things are gonna affect the pressure that's coming out of that tank hitting the regulator. The regulator's job is to regulate so that what's coming out of the regulator is 11 inches of water column, 11 to 14. If you ever have more than 14, then this is an automatic fail and you replace it. That is to say, if you do a test and you get 15 or 16 or inch, 17 inches of water column, don't try to fix it, replace it. On that note, it may remember something. Check your state, check your province. You may be required to be licensed, to carry a licensed card. You may be required to have insurance. You may be required to uh, get a certification in order to work on any LP related appliance or regulator or anything having to do with anything LP on your RV. So uh, I used this analogy in my other, in another video where we were talking about LP. Uh, I could go watch a video uh, on a heart surgeon. You know, that doesn't mean I'm gonna go out to do heart surgery, but it's kind of fi fun to watch how they do the heart surgery, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna go doing open heart surgery on you. Same with the LP. Um, this, this is the heart of your propane system. Watch, enjoy, learn a lot of stuff. But if you are not licensed, if your state requires you to be licensed and you do not have all these licenses, then ha enjoy the show, but don't do this get a certified licensed um, uh, we uh, we have to carry a million dollar liability policy i've got a manager's license on lp um, had to take an eight-hour course score 90 or above all these types of things just to be able to work on rvs okay so that was a little side note there uh, learn what you can from this but if you're not licensed or your state doesn't allow it don't do this 
Okay, so I'm really stressing that. Well, I watched Aaron and he did that video and I did this and I blew up my RV and it's his fault. Uh, no, it's not my fault. Okay, so let's just establish that straight up. Okay, um, but I'm just really want to drive this down. Um, LP is extremely safe. Um, if there's a LP spill, it's just it's not going to hurt the environment at all. It's just going to just fade away. Unlike a propane or unlike a diesel or a gasoline spill, it's going to now you have a hazmat situation. Propane is very safe, properly um, tuned. Uh, when all your appliances are to spec, this is a big part of getting everything to spec. The only outcome of the burning propane is carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water. <sighs> there, carbon dioxide and water. Well, we're in Washington, so we get a lot of water. So it, that's if it's properly tuned. If it's not properly tuned, then there could be carbon monoxide, which is going to kill you, and um, soot and yellow tipping flames, all kinds of things. Okay, so we're going to add this video to our LP playlist, and within that LP playlist is going to be a whole bunch of other LP related type stuff. I might repeat myself on several different videos. Let's get back to the topic at hand here. That's the LP regulator. So we have fluctuating pr pressure coming in from the tank. Anything up to 375 PSI, if it gets to 375 PSI, that tank's going to vent out, okay? So we don't know what this pressure is going to be, right? But it's coming in to the top first stage of this regulator, bringing it down to 10 PSI. So up to 375, greater than 375, the pressure is going to vent out bringing the first stage is going to bring it down to 10 psi so now the second stage here can can dial it in to six ounces which is 11 inches of water column okay i hope that makes sense so that's what this thing does if this is wrong all of your appliances are going to be wrong okay um so uh according to nfpa the two-stage regulator does not have to be a one entire body it could be two separate things. The first thing could be the first stage. The second thing could be the second stage. But they together, they must do the same thing as what one unit will do. Okay. If you have a cylinder that is greater than 60 inches away from this regulator, that's five feet, folks. Um, if you like, and, and you'll find this a lot on your uh, fifth wheels. We see a lot on fifth wheels where they'll have one cylinder on the driver side or on the street side and one cylinder on the curb side. And usually it's a curb side that has the regulator on it. And, um, but that other um, cylinder is greater than five feet away. You must have an additional regulator on the five foot side, on the farther side. And what that does is that brings the pressure down to 30 PSI. Okay, so it brings it down to 30 PSI, then it brings it over to here, which brings it down to 10 PSI, and then it brings it down to 6 ounces or 11 inches. Okay, so regulator. I've done another video where you inspect these things. Okay, so on our playlist, like I say, I'm going to start building that LP playlist on, on different things, and I'm going to stress it again. If you are not licensed or trained to deal with this stuff, enjoy the show, watch it, have whoever you want to watch it. But if you're going to be working on LP, make sure that your state allows it and follow all the things that your state or province requires of you to work on RV on LP in an RV. Okay, so there's my quick little talk about the regulator, this being an auto changeover. And while I'm here, let me do a quick talk on the auto changeover part of this. Let me get a little closer. Um, I did a service call last week and I found the lever in the up position like that, okay? And um, now anybody wanna guess what that's gonna do? And, and I'm, I'm not trying to, to point at anybody out or anything. I have come across this multiple, multiple times where an auto changeover regulator, they put the valve in the straight up and down position, okay? It'll work, but that's not the way it was designed, okay? So let me, I'll tell you what, um, I'm going to tease you guys a little bit. I'm going to talk about how this is supposed to work after I get it installed, okay? Because then I have a prop of two tanks and I can show you how it's supposed to work, okay? So stay tuned towards the end. When I get this installed and we get the pigtails on it and we get it in the, the two cylinders connected, then I will explain the auto changeover part, okay? Um, another thing you could do is go to our playlist. I'll be talking about the LP playlist. Just work your way back to our My RV Works uh, YouTube channel 
and uh, you'll see our playlist there just along the top find playlist and we've got several playlists find the one for lp and then this video will be there but several others will be there as well and i'll have it on its own standalone just for the auto changeover part and then how to inspect these things etc okay so i'm going to get the camera set up and we're going to start working on this um, truck camper and we're going to get this installed put the pigtails on it and connect it to the cylinders okay so let's get going here I have where the propane regulator is going to go. It's going to go on this little flap. The flap is set so that you can raise it up out of the way when you pull these out. Now, this is the regulator that came out of it. Okay, now watch here. I'm going to pour this out. Watch. There it is. Okay, did you see that? Okay, so there's oil in the line. All right, so this is the one that we just took out. Here, we're going to talk about the oil in just a second. But another thing I want you to look at, let's see, okay, yeah, here, let's see here. Uh, see right underneath there, that little stain, okay? That is an indication that this regulator has failed. So when you do your inspections on your regulator, look for stuff like that, okay? Now, the only way that for you to have known that there was oil in the line is to have dumped it out, okay? And uh, so I'm going to set this down. We're going to talk about this in just a second, um, okay? So we're going to put a new regulator on. That was the reason we had to replace the regulator. So the new regulator is going to go here. But we have to make some modifications to it. Uh, things are just a bit out of reach. Hold on, let me grab them. I'm back. So one of the things we're going to need to do is put these little right angle ear things on it to make the pigtail face down. And uh, we'll put some rector seal on the threads. And we'll talk about that. And then on the bottom, let me set these down, um, where this hose comes in, we need it to kind of come in at an angle like that. So we're going to be making some changes. Basically, we're going to take those pieces off that were full of oil. We're going to clean them up and put them on this one. Okay, so that's the job, folks. When it's done, this will fit there. And um, we'll be able to raise this out of the way and get your cylinders in and out. So now let's move the camera over here to my cart here where I've got a vise and we're holding things in place. And let's talk a little bit about this oil that we just poured out of the deal. And, um, and then let's get everything changed over. This here, what we got here, this is the original regulator that I did you the close up on. And um, here would be the new one. Okay, so I'm just going to see if I can untwist this and see what comes out of it. Nope. Okay, so let's uh, uh, maybe let's see here. There we go. Okay, I just needed to get. Okay, so we're going to unscrew this little jewel right here. Now I do have a jug. I'm going to try my best to collect as much oil. I don't think I'm going to have enough. Yeah, okay. So we're going to pour some oil. Not a lot. Okay, let's talk about this oil. Where's this oil coming from, folks? I got a lot of people out there saying, well, it's coming from your overfilling of your cylinder. Okay, well, let's talk about overfilling of the cylinder. Okay, so if my cylinder or my tank was overfilled, could it introduce liquid into my system? Yes, it most certainly could. Absolutely, it most certainly could. Is that the oil that I'm seeing here? No, it is not the oil that I'm seeing here. There is no oil element. There's no oil component to propane. But Darren, 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 propane comes from the uh, ground. Well, you're absolutely correct. It does come from the ground and it does come from crude oil. But it's kind of like when I'm making my pot of red beans and rice on the stove, my pressure cooker, and I've got steam coming out the top. The steam coming out of the top is not the red beans and rice and all the stuff. It's just water vapor coming out the top. And the way that they get propane, folks, is they boil all that crude oil. And you've ever seen these uh, rectifier stacks. Now, if you're a pro, if you're, I feel like a, here, let me do this. Stand by here. Let me, let's talk about this oil here for a second. Let me just raise everybody up. Okay, so we're talking about this oil, okay, and uh, you saw me pour into this little, I was hoping I can get more out of there, um, and what I'm going to do, uh, it probably would be a really, really, really super duper good idea to blow the lines out. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. I'll go ahead and assemble this, okay. I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm going to blow the lines out. So I'm going to make a video of me blowing the lines out, but that's going to be a separate video. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this one and put it all together, and then it'll be a simple little thing. So note to self, so if you want to see me blowing the lines out, go check out our LP playlist and look for Darren blowing the lines out, okay? But let's talk about this oil. Where's the oil coming from? Um, I'm sure that a lot of folks out there are saying that the oil here, this oil right here, 
is coming from overfilling of a tank. And uh, that's, not a, that's not an accurate statement. It is possible that you could overfill your tank. You'd have to really try to do it. Um, you, you know, look at, the, have you ever taken, if you've got your standard toilet, take the cover off and you got that little float thing that turns the water on and off, okay? I want you to visualize that thing. That's how your toilet doesn't overflow, okay? So when your water's filling up that tank that sits on the back, and that little float thing lifts up, that is basically cutting the water line off. Okay, well inside of your tanks, whether it's an AMSE tank or if it's a cylinder, it's got one of those little float things in it. Okay, I'm sure if you go to Google this or whatever, your, your let's see, let me, uh, your, your uh, web search engine of choice, okay, and you, you were to ask what is inside of a propane cylinder, you're gonna see one of these float bulbs. Okay, same thing with all kinds of stuff. It's just standard thing. So if you're going to overfill a cylinder, you're going to have to really work hard at doing that. You would have gone over that thing that floats and tells it not to overfill. Okay, so I just wanted to say that. This is not a thing that just because you went and got your propane cylinder filled, the guy's going to overfill it. You got to work at doing that. It's something you have to want to do. Okay, or you're just not licensed, you're not trained, and you're filling cylinders, and you shouldn't be. <sighs> if you do overfill your cylinder, propane is a clear, odorless um, colorless liquid. Okay. That is not clear. Okay. And if I smell it, it's got a little bit of an oily residue in it. Okay. Now we were talking about, um, how they get propane, propane, these big giant rectifier things, they put crude in it and they boil all that kind of stuff. And it comes out at different levels at the very, very tippy top of that. You have the vapor and that's what they pull out. Okay. They refrigerate it and then they put it off and put it in a compressed cylinder. They put it in a cylinder or a tank or whatever they compress it. And that turns it from a vapor back into a liquid and it's pure, it's clear and it's odorless and colorless. Okay. They add that ethyl mercaptan element to it at the refinery, which is that rotten egg skunky smell. Okay. Where's that coming from? I submit to you, it's coming from your pigtail hoses. There is oil in here. This is a petroleum product. Okay. Well, so is propane. Well, you're right, but this doesn't, this wasn't boiled and rectified out the top of the thing as a vapor. Okay. Um, so this, this liquid here, that's coming from your pigtails, folks. If you have, see this pigtail is nice and flexible and all that kind of stuff. You know, I shoulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda, might ought to coulda. Here, here was the original regulator. The pigtails that came off of that were like a tertiary structure, okay? They were like stuck like, like that. I would have had to have worked really hard to have straightened those things out. And if you looked closely, you would have seen a lot of little uh, like tires that have been sitting on a, in the sun for a long time. There would have been little, little crinkles in here. Okay. Well, everything that's causing this thing to freeze like that, when you go look at your pigtails, here's your homework assignment. If you've got pigtails, I want you to see if you can move them around a little bit. If you can move them around a little bit, that's a, that's a good thing. Okay. If they're stuck like that, I'm sorry to say you may have all the reason that they came that way is because all that pressure that it was under uh, leached, I'm going to use the word leach, it leached the oil out of the rubber and put it in your system. Don't believe me. Oh, you say you are a naysayer. Darren, you're wrong. Okay, well here, here, I got another one for you. Uh, you got a car and a piece of concrete in your shop, in your garage, and that car's been sitting there for an interval of time many months, many years. Move that car. What's on your concrete? Anybody? What's on the concrete? A black stain from what? The rubber tires. So you're, I'm telling you that the oil is going to leach out and stain your carport, stain that concrete. Okay. And I'm telling you right now, folks, that the oil that is in your lines is coming from this oil pigtail. If, let's go back to overfilling your tank, because there's a lot of people out there thinking that the oil, this oil here is coming from overfilling of a propane tank. Propane boils, let's use water for example. I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna water and then propane. If I put a pot of water on my stove and I crank that thing up on high, what's the temperature that that water goes from a liquid to a vapor? Anybody? 212 degrees Fahrenheit. We got folks all over the world that are watching. I'm sorry, I don't know what the Fahrenheit is to Celsius. I don't, I'm sorry. Whatever that number is. Maybe it's 100. That's what I love about Celsius. It's just so base 10. It's awesome. So basically, when I've got my pot on the stove at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to go from a liquid to a vapor. It's changed states. Propane, anybody know what temperature propane goes from a liquid to a vapor? From a liquid to a vapor, propane, anybody? Minus negative 44 degrees. Negative 44 degrees. 
negative 44 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay. That is to say, if I had a coffee cup, if I had my Meyer V Works coffee cup and I'm walking around in here and I'm drinking my coffee, hey, I got a cup of Joe here. How you doing? And it's it's liquid propane in my thing and it's less than, colder than minus 44 Fahrenheit. So that's minus 43, 42, 41. Freaking cold, like up in Canada, eh? where it's really freaking cold or even, even Wyoming. I've been in Wyoming when it was that cold. But anyway, if it's minus 44 or lower in temperature Fahrenheit, this propane is a liquid, it's a clear liquid, clear liquid. Let's just say one cup of liquid propane in my coffee cup. Liquid propane, one cup, lower than minus 44. We're walking around, we're walking around, it's clear, it's not this color. And all of a sudden I go into the next room, I wanna warm up a little bit, we're going ice fishing and I go in that little hut and it's got some uh, burners and stuff in there and it's greater than minus 44, maybe it's minus, actually I went the wrong way, three, two, one, it actually minus 45, 46, 47. I got my number line wrong. As soon as I go greater than minus 44, which would be minus 42, minus 43, minus four, okay, I just gotta get my number line, I'm going back towards zero. This one cup of liquid propane will vaporize just as surely as that pot on my stove. It becomes a vapor at that point. And guess how many times this one cup of liquid will go into cubic area of vaporization. Anybody? 270 times. So that is to say I've got one cup of liquid propane, colder than minus 44 Fahrenheit, greater than minus 44 Fahrenheit, this one cup of liquid propane, no longer liquid, now it's a vapor, and it's the volume of that is 277 times what it was as a liquid. So if I had one cup of liquid, I got 277 cups of vapor. That's pretty freaking awesome but it's a clear, that's my point, it's a clear liquid. Now, I bring that point up because here's my regulator, right? We talked about propane vaporizing at minus 44. That's why I did my ice fishing analogy. It was important for me to drive that point because let's say that my cylinder got overfilled down at the place where the guy fills it. My cylinder's overfilled. I'm going to introduce liquid propane into this, okay? Now this is gas tight, okay? So now I'm getting liquid into my lines and all that kind of stuff you might notice this thing right here starting to frost. Why? Because that means this thing's freaking cold and all the air, any moisture is gonna get this thing and it's gonna frost all over it. So if my cylinder was overfilled and I had liquid propane going into my two-stage regulator, going into my RV, you're gonna notice frost all over this thing because it's very, very cold. You could even touch it, okay? There, I'm trying to drive a point home on um, overfilling of tanks. That's not propane, folks. Smell it. That is oil. That is oil. It's like, a, like out of an engine of a car. And um, it's coming from your pigtails. So I'm done with that. Let's get back to work. But I really wanted to, and I'm going to repeat myself. If you go to my playlist and you watch the LP thing, you're going to hear me say a lot of this over and over again because I don't know which video you watched. Um, so let me put this over here. Let's get back to work. I'm gonna pan you back down to my vise here and we're going to transfer this. The inside of this isn't so bad. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go get a can of office air and just blow this out. But I'm looking inside and it's not terrible. There's nothing, nothing in it anymore. So let me pause, let me get a can of office air and blow this thing out. So um, I've got a can of just like this uh, computer stuff and I'm just gonna <laughs> blow that out. <laughs> Yeah, the liquid is coming out of this can. Um, like if I were to come out of there. All right. Yay. Okay. So let me show you what we're gonna do here. Rector seal, right? This is the stuff that's gas rated. So let's look at these threads right here. Okay, let me let me make sure I'm gonna, I always squirt this first just to make sure. Same thing with a ketchup bottle. I just wanna make sure it's good. Okay, stop it. So I'm going to, I'm not looking at you here. There we go. I'm missing those first two threads, aren't I? On purpose. Everybody see? Okay. Uh, Cause I'm looking at what I'm doing and not so much at the camera. So I don't know if I'm in the shot or not. So anyway, this is really awkward. <laughs> Normally I can have this done by now, but there we go. So what I'm trying to say here is I did not get those top two threads, did I? Um, and you don't want to. Okay, if you're going to use Teflon, I would not use Teflon on a gas line. I mean, 
let me qualify my statement. The, the tape. I would not use a tape. Um, because I've done jobs like this, and guess what gets inside of these things? The tape. All right, You're, you guessed right. So I'm going to set this right here. Okay. And we are going to screw on our... There we go. So when I'm done, I want it to be in that orientation. Okay. So I'm going to spin it around, spin it around. Starting to get a little tight there. Okay. There we go. A little more. Okay. So when we're all done with this, we are going to be doing the sniff test and a little dauber. I've got the dauber with the uh, bubble stuff. Um, Rector Seal makes that as well. It's like a blue product with a little dauber on the end of it, and you just wipe it around everything. Okay, so there's that part. Now, the other thing we needed to do <clears throat> is put these little ears that f angle down, okay? So we're going to do the same thing. This time I'm going to do it over here, but I wanted you to see. So I am not going to do the first two threads, okay? And um, I've got a bigger can of this that's got a brush in it that does make it a little easier, but it's getting empty. There we go. Okay. So I want this, when I'm done, I want it to be angled down. And these fittings came off of the other regulator. I think I can get a whole nother turn out of that. Let me, uh, yeah, I can. Okay. I want them to be right there. Okay. Here we have the regulator with his two ears pointing down, and on the bottom, he's got the, uh, the part we're going to connect to the hose. All right, that's good. Let's connect it. All right, so we're over here now, and they give us these handy little screws. But you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to put this hose on right there. Now, remember I said I was going to blow the lines out? All I'm going to be doing is taking this hose back off. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put it together. Um, all right, now we've got all this made up with the ears pointing down and the thing pointing up. That way it will go right here and everybody will be happy, okay? And um, I am going to be blowing this line out later in another video, excuse me, right after this. But I'm going to make that its own separate video. But I'm going to go ahead and finish connecting everything, okay? So if there's oil in the line, it'll still work, but it's going to be like cholesterol in your body. And I'm going to show you... If there is oil in the line, we're going to be doing some LP testing on this to make sure that it worked. And uh, because that's a whole other thing of this. It's not enough just to throw a new regulator on. You also have to put a, um, what's called a, you have to do a, a time pressure drop test to make sure there's no leaks. You have to do a lockout pressure test and an operating pressure test. And uh, so it's like putting a car, putting a tire on your car or putting a tire on your truck. If you don't put the right air in it, what good is that? So there's more to this than just putting on your fittings and slam the thing in there. You have no idea what this thing is set to. And you take this little screw cover off right in there and you look inside, you see that little thing that you can turn, okay? Um, we may or may not need to adjust that. Well, in order to do that, you need to have the manometer and all the taps to tap into the system and tap into the line. I'll show you those when we get to that part. So I wanted to just stress that. To the point I made earlier about if you're not licensed or trained and all this kind of stuff, that's all part of this, okay? Um, there's more to it than just the four screws in the back and the screwing things on here. So uh, having said that, I'm going to go ahead and make this connection, okay? And um, then when we do the, uh, when I blow the lines out, I'll be taking this connection right here back off if it's needed. Now I'll show you how to use the, uh, the LP taps to determine if there's uh, liquid in the lines. And we all know where the liquid came from, okay? So you always use two wrenches. I almost need a third hand here. Now, here's a question. This is a flare fitting, okay? Do you put any kind of a Teflon or any kind of a sealant or pipe sealant or pipe dope on a flare fitting? Anybody, anybody, do you ever, ever, ever put any kind of pipe dope on a flare fitting? Never, 
never, never, never, ever do you ever, ever, and I'm stressing this because I've seen this so many times in the field when I do service calls, they're putting pipe dope or Teflon or Teflon tape or something on a flare fitting and that is absolutely 100% incorrect. You never, never put any kind of anything on a flare fitting. The flare fitting is itself the seal, okay? And the way that that works is it kind of swedges itself. It pinches, pinches for, I was trained as an RV tech in Texas, that's pinch. It pinches, and so if you put that tape on there and it pinched it, guess what you just did? You just introduced a foreign material inside of this regulator because it pinched it off. So this fitting right here is a flare where my pigtail connects, where my hose connects is a flare. So the only place we use any kind of pipe dope is on the pipe threads, NTP pipe threads, and never on the first two threads and always on the male. So it's the male thread, never the first two threads of the male thread of an N a national pipe thread, an NTP thread. Flares never, ever, never get Teflon. Um, we did a job uh, what, two months ago, not even that long, and all over that RV, it was a, uh, an old RV that the guy redid himself, and he calls us to work on the LP. And um, he had put f Teflon tape on every single one of his flare fittings, and guess what? That was all inside of his line. So I'm really trying to stress that point. If you're out there doing that, that's not correct, wrong, don't do that anymore. So when you do a flare, tighten it, loosen it, and tighten it again. Okay, and that sets that flare uh, connection. Okay, there we go. So now we have it looking something like that. And uh, let's see here. They gave us these uh, nice little screws right here. So I'm using the same screws as the old one. So I am hoping to hold that right there. And I'm hoping to, all right, here's a trick. Let me eyeball something first. Uh, let's see here. We're going to come in like that. There we go. All right. This is going to be so beautiful. There we are. Okay. And since I've got four screws, but there we go. I've got four screws, but since I'm going to be taking off that hose that I just put on, when I, I may or may not have, ah, never mind. I was going to say I'm only going to put two screws in, but I'm going to go all four because I can get to it from the back right here. Let's just do it this way. Beautiful. Now for the pigtails. So these are brand new pigtails. Okay. Um, there's green, light green, red, and black. Black is your barbecue grill. Uh, green and light green are your RVs and red is for like a high flow, like a torch, or if you have a high flow regulator. And let me just make a comment on that too. The, the definition of, of these, if you look inside at the holes, it has to do with how many BTUs are allowed to pass through. They also have three different types of regulators, high flow, standard, and low flow. Um, typically your low flow might have the body is blue, typically, I, I don't know, different manufacturers, everybody's got their own way of doing things. Um, I know that MEC, the, the main body of the second stage of the regulator, if it's a low flow, that would be a blue color. Um, if it's standard, it's, it's this color here. And if it's a high flow, it would be green. Um, whenever we get called on to install an on-demand water heater, like if there, if there was a, um, a tank type water heater on an RV and they call us in to, put on a, to take that tank out and put in a high flow, um, I'm sorry, an on-demand water heater, then we automatically will put a high flow regulator on it as well. Um, we've, we've put those in before and then, and then it bothered me. It, they would call like, hey, it's just not working right. And when we put the high flow regulator on, it fixed every problem with that. So if you call us to put in, to, to upgrade your water heater to an on-demand water heater, included in our estimate, you know, is going to be the uh, high flow regulator, also high flow pigtails, which have the red ends. Okay. That's just going to allow more propane through and get to that. So if, if you're in a situation where your furnace is running, you're making cookies, uh, your oven's running, and then you want your on-demand water heater, a standard one may not allow enough to go through. Uh, I'm go back to the playlist again, because I've got a whole video on the regulator. We talk about all that and also the pigtails. So enough on that. So here we have a flare. So what's the trick? Tighten, loosen, tighten, right? 
Um, oh, wait, I forgot to put sealant on these. Well, that guy on that video said you don't do it, and he's absolutely correct. Um, now, on the side of this, I don't know if you guys can see on the side right here, there's that screw um, that we're going to, uh, in another video, <laughs> in another video, I'm going to show you how to tap into that. These are for your RV technicians. They're going to be doing LP work. Um, you'll be able to tap right into that and get the uh, LP pressure right from here. Okay, let's get these started. Hold on, let me stand on the, you're going to look at my back for a second, but everything's awkward on that way. So let's go this way. So we're tightening and tightening. Okay. So what was that trick again? Tighten, loosen, tighten. Okay. So always use a backup wrench. There it is. Okay. I feel like my arms are in your way. Okay. And we're going to tighten. Now on these little pigtails, be careful because um, I have over tightened these because it's brass. I've over tightened them and I've stripped them. So don't do that. You want to be snug. So I'm going to tighten, loosen, tight. Okay. That's all you need to do there. And let's do the same to this side. Tighten, loosen. There we go. Okay, very well. All right, so we got our pigtails on here. Remember the flare, tighten, loosen, tighten. Snug, snug, not over, not millwright tight, okay? And um, so now this then will seat back up in here and I'm seeing a problem, are you? So this, I need, a, I need a longer one, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay, so I need this guy right here to be able to come nice and, and be able to make this turn into this cylinder right here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get a longer pigtail. I don't have one with me, but I'm, for right now, for testing, I'm just gonna connect it. And um, this guy here, he may be okay. Um, I'm gonna wanna, yeah, this one might be okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so this one on this side's fine. It comes out and does a nice little loop and doesn't interfere with anything. But this one here is gonna need to be a little bit longer. I may have one, but I doubt it. Um, so this would be really great if I could get him to come around. So it turns out that um, this cylinder is basically empty and this one is uh, just under half, okay? So um, I could force this to work, but I won't. So here's the part where I'm going to talk about this auto changeover, okay? Um, I'm going to force this on here just for purposes of, uh, hmm, how am I going to get him on there? Okay, I'm not. I'm just going to leave this loose. I don't want to hurt. It would be stressing it too tightly. So, uh, hey, note to self, make sure when you get your pigtails, make sure that they're going to be long enough, right? Okay, this is just what I have in my service trailer, and this is pretty much my standard length, but I'm going to have to make a special order and get a longer one. So the part where I was talking about this auto changeover, what I'm going to do is let me put you guys right here center mass so you can see what I'm talking about. And um, so, yeah, let me let me do that. Hold on. I'm going to take you for a ride. OK, folks, so we got our pigtails on. Here's one that comes all the way around and connects to this cylinder over here. And so this guy, he is going to um, connect right in here. OK. Okay, he's tight, and I'm going to point to this cylinder. If you look here, he's saying that he's just under half full, and over here, this guy's empty. Okay, so this will make for a good test, because I told you, stay till the end, and I'll show you how this little thing works right here. Okay, so you'll notice, if you can look in here, let me, uh, that's red. Let me, yeah, it's, you can see that that's red. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, I'm, I'm going to point this is if you look at it it's going to say supply with an arrow and i'm going to point to this cylinder okay i'm not going to point up and down i'm going to point to the cylinder and i'm going to turn this valve on this is a service valve i'm going to turn the service valve on and look for that to turn green here we go turning there it just turned green okay now that does not necessarily mean that there's an appliance inside that's consuming the propane but it's just letting us know that okay I'm being serviced from this one and I have enough pressure for me to work. Now I'm also gonna turn on this cylinder, okay? So let's do the talking points on how this works and then I'll go do a demo. Um, 
it's an auto changeover. It doesn't mean that it's going to automatically, um, this lever is going to automatically change. Basically what this is going to do is internally it's going to change from this cylinder to this cylinder. You human need to switch it. Now how do you human know when to switch this? That has everything to do with the green indicator flag. Okay, so here we have a full cylinder. Here we have an empty cylinder. Both service valves are all wide open. Okay, I'm pointing to what I'm going to refer to as my supply cylinder, making this cylinder the reserve cylinder. Okay, so service supply cylinder, reserve cylinder. Pretend they're both full, even though this one is saying that he's empty. Pretend both cylinders are full. I'm pointing to this one. I'm inside, I'm using my, my furnace, I'm using my water heater, my refrigerator, and eventually this tank will be consumed and, and basically go empty or lose what's called vapor pressure. It's lost its ability to create vapor. There still may be some propane liquid inside there, but it's not enough for it to actually create a vapor that's usable. So then this sight glass, this flag here will switch to red. I'm pointing to the cylinder, this then switches to red. When it switches to red, it's telling you, human, that the cylinder that I'm pointing to cannot create enough vapor pressure. Therefore, internally, I'm going to draw from the reserve cylinder, this cylinder, okay? It's red, pointing to this one. Again, we're pretending that they're both full. I'm pointing to this one. This cylinder gets depleted. It does not have enough vapor pressure to do the work that you're asking it to do. Therefore, the site goes to red. Therefore, internally, the auto changeover part, internally, he's going to draw from the reserve cylinder. Okay, you human check this once a week, once every couple of days. And if you notice that it's red, then what you do is you flip the lever over to the other cylinder that was the reserve cylinder, which is now the supply cylinder, making this one the reserve cylinder. When the site class was red and now it goes to green, because I'm pointing to this guy, then you can safely turn off your service valve. Okay, turn it off. And I can safely disconnect my type one connector. You hear that little hissy sound. Okay, and I can put my cap on and I can take this cylinder out and I can go get it refilled. And then I can put it back in and then I can take off my cap and I can reconnect it again. And now I have a full reserve cylinder and I've never had an interruption of propane between, it, it, my RV has always had a propane source from supply and return, supply and return. So if that makes sense. Now, okay, one more thing. When I was pointing to, let's keep my analogy the same. When I was pointing to, I, I need this service valve to be up just a little bit more. Okay, there, okay. So when I am pointing to my supply cylinder and my sight glass goes red. So when I'm pointing to my supply cylinder, I'm getting all the BTUs that this regulator will allow through it. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I've got another video where we talk about the different regulators and their different BTUs per hour. But when I'm pointing to the service cylinder, I'm getting all the BTUs per hour that this regulator will allow through it. When this gets depleted and does not have enough vapor pressure to do the job that I'm asking it to do, this will turn red and it will automatically pull from my reserve side. When I'm pulling from my reserve side, I have a 40% reduction in BTUs per hour. A 40% reduction in BTUs per hour. When the site is red and I'm drawing from my reserve tank, I have a 40% reduction in BTUs per hour. Okay, I've said that three times now, it's important. Here, when I'm pointing to here, I have all available BTUs that the regulator is set for. On my reserve side, when it turns red and I'm pulling from a reserve, there is a reduction. Therefore, when I am in the up position, anybody want to guess what just happened? I have now, when I'm in the up position, this is what I was going to talk about at the very beginning of the video. When I'm in the up position, I have now retarded both cylinders to a 40% reduction in my BTUs per hour by putting this in the up position. It's like a differential. It's gonna draw, when it's in the up position, it's gonna draw from both cylinders, whichever one has the available, it's just gonna draw from both, okay? Uh, like the differential on your truck, okay? Um, it's One's not the service supply and one is not the reserve. They're both just gonna draw and you are going to be depleting them both equally and they're both gonna go empty, leaving you high and dry without any propane. I'd much rather you see it pointing to supply. In order for this to work, you need to have both service valves open on your service valves, you want to open them slowly 
and either open them all the way or close them all the way. There is a seal and bonnet assembly inside of this. And when you open it all the way and close it all the way, you might even feel a little bit of a catch, if you will, a little, little tightness. That is sealing the bonnet inside of this. You would never operate your cylinder kind of half full or like half open or closed. It's not like a water hydrant uh, where you can just kind of turn it on a little bit just to get a little bit of flow. On your cylinders, you want them all the way open or all the way closed. So in order for this to work, you're going to open both cylinders all the way open. You're going to point to what you want to be your supply, making the other one the automatic reserve. You're going to look for your sight glass. It's going to be green until it loses its ability to create vapor pressure. That will then turn red. You, human, will turn this back over. You'll wait for that to turn green. When that turns green, then or, or clear, this one turns green and red, but a lot of the ones out there on the market will be go clear and red, okay? Anything but red. So you're gonna to point to this, it's gonna either go green or it's gonna go clear. No, in other words, no red. And then once it goes green or clear, that is when you can safely turn off your service valve, disconnect your type one connector and go get this refilled, okay? Um, so there's one more important thing that we need to do here and that is check for leaks. So I should have done that before I did my auto changeover thing. So let's uh, do that. Here we go. Um, so I'm gonna use this gas sniffer. The thing about this is it takes it about a minute to boot up. So I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'm just gonna set it over here. You may have heard the thing beeping you may have heard the thing beeping earlier. Um, I thought I was gonna to get to it a little bit sooner. So, and then I have um, this product here. I'll make a link to it below, but it's made by Rector Seal and it's gas leak uh, locator. Okay, so I'm going to use a sniffer to sniff for a leak. I don't smell any ethyl mercaptan in here, but I'm gonna use my sniffer to sniff first. And if, I, if it detects something, then I will use my, my dauber. The cool thing about this is um, it's got this dauber at the end, okay? And then it's, um, the bubbles on this thing are huge. <laughs> and then um, it'll find them. So, but I'm not smelling anything and, and I've got it all the way open on both of them. Again, this one's empty. This one's got half in, the, in it. Let's see right over here. There we go. Okay, perfect timing. Okay, here we go. So it's on and it's saying that it's ready. Okay. So I am just gonna wand this thing all around in here especially paying particular attention to all the places where I made a connection. Okay. And uh, he's not picking up anything. Now, since propane is heavier than there, I can go towards the bottom. It might like to hide in there somewhere. So it looks like everything's gas tight. Okay. Now let's say that there was, there's no, there's no leak, but let's say that there was, what I want to do is put this right here. When this thing makes that hiss sound, I'm going to try to get this thing to, to cheat for us. Uh, let me get it loose. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna try to get it to cheat. There you go. Just like that. Okay. And all I did, so he, he picked up on that big time. Okay. And all I did was I just loosened this just, God, not even a little bit. So once he's done, where is everybody? Once he's done sniffing, he'll, he'll work his way back down again. There, here, here he goes. So he's gonna slow himself back down. So that's what's going on with this. I'll make a link to this, all my links down below as well. So he's kind of happy, he's not sniffing anything anymore. And uh, so he's getting some clean, fresh air, okay? But uh, I use this a lot, uh, it's my third one because I use these so much that I, they just get a lot of abuse. Um, this one just got new batteries put in. Had there been a leak, that's where I would have taken this dauber and just daubed around and things. Uh, this product here is fantastic for letting me know that there is a leak and it can get pretty close, but this one's gonna get me, you know, right on where it needs to be. So let me do one more little test for you guys. Okay, so what I wanna do now, I'm gonna go turn on the burner inside. Uh, let me zoom you guys in. There we go. Okay, bear with me. I want you to see that little green indicator. Okay. All right, so I brought everybody closer. I've got both service valves wide open. Actually, I'm gonna close this one. This cylinder was empty anyway, but I'm gonna close it. Closing it is going to simulate that it's empty. <laughs> it is empty, but closing it is gonna surely simulate that it's empty. This guy's wide open. You see the green side glass in there. I am pointing to the side that has the propane in it, okay? And it's green. So now I'm going to close this one, okay? Simulating that it is now empty. So now both of my cylinders are empty, okay? 
and see, but it's still green because it's still pressurized. And I'm gonna run inside, I'm gonna turn on the stove burner. When I turn on the stove burner, I just want you to watch this right here and you'll see it flip down into red. Okay, so watch for that. That lets you human know that the propane is empty. So here we go. And we're gonna open up the gas valve right now. And I'm listening. I'm hearing gas on the inside. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this right now. So all I did was I opened up the, uh, the gas port on the inside, simulating gas flow. And let's see what you guys saw. Yeah, it went red, okay. So, so then what that would tell me, human, is that no longer is my, I got everybody zoomed in. So then I would need to turn this to the other side over here, wouldn't I? Okay, it'll flip green and then I can go replace it, all right? Well, guys, that's really pretty much what I wanted to show you. There is one more very important step that needs to be done on this, and that is to do the operating lockout and time pressure drop test. Now, I'm going to do that in another video, okay? And so basically, I'll just continue this on, but um, that is a very important test. I liken it to going to get a new tire on your vehicle and then doing the um, um, putting air in the tires. Okay, so it's not enough just to put a new regulator on your RV. Let me stress that it is not enough to go to the store, go to the camping counter and put a new regulator on your RV. It's not enough to do that. You must, must, must also do a time pressure drop test to make sure there is no leaks. You want the whole thing gas tight. You must, must, must also do an operating pressure test and you must also do a um, regulator lockout test. Those are three tests. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you have no I'm going to say no right. You have no, you should not be playing with propane. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say operating pressure test, lockout pressure test, and a time pressure drop test. Those are things that a licensed certified um, card carrying RV technician that's been trained specifically on doing LP work on RVs would know exactly what I'm talking about and the exact procedures that you go through. All that is spelled out in the NFPA manual, National Fire Protection Association. So, um, if, if you want to learn more about this, okay, then I got the notes here. It's NFPA 1192. So you can go to your uh, web engine searcher of choice, okay, and type in NFPA 1192. It is a very large document, um, but it is, it's a PDF document, but it's locked. That means that you cannot download it. You can buy it but you cannot download it, but you can view it all day long to your heart's content online, but you cannot download it, you can't, okay. But in the NFPA 1192 is where there's all the regulations for LP regulations in an RV. My gosh, there is a deer right there. Wow, that's really cool. When we're done, I'll pan you and show you mama deer. Hi, mama deer. Oh, she's good. she just had babies and they're so cute. So she's right there. Before she runs away, let me show you guys this. Hold on. Looks like she's gonna leave. Here, let's pan over here and see about my deer. She's right over there, where'd she go? There she goes. Anyway, she was just right there. We feed her, let's put you back over here. We feed her uh, corn and um, so she's friendly. I'm not gonna pet her. I mean, she's a freaking deer, but if the zombie apocalypse happened, I got meat, right? <laughs> so feed your deer, people. So NFP 1192, that's what I wanted to mention. Uh, and again, I want to stress, if you don't know what these tests are that I'm talking about, then, then you, RV DIYer, I love you guys. I love that you're watching the channel. Learn a lot and learn a lot that you can. But if you don't know how to do these tests, you really should not be doing this kind of work. Uh, but it's, a, it's, a, it's good that you're learning how to do the work. But uh, the tests that you have to take, um, the tools that you have to buy to do the manometers, you're looking at several hundreds of dollars in testing equipment just to be able to, to make sure that you do this right. So I'm going to reserve the uh, lockout test, the um, time pressure drop test, and the um, operating pressure test for my next video. So you could watch it watch to your heart's content. I'll make it on my playlist. So just look at our LP playlist and you'll see all those things here. Um, but um, anyway, so hey guys, if this was helpful, if this added value to you, please give us a thumb up. That really helps. Uh, it gives us some love. And, um, and there's another baby deer. Oh, this is fun. It's feeding time. And uh, you can share this video with some friends. If you've got a favorite RV technician, uh, you can share it with them. I uh, probably threw a couple tips and tricks in there, went on a little long on a couple things. Some of the takeaways is about the oil in the line. I've heard a lot of people tell me that it's because the propane are overfilled, and that is not a correct statement. Your propane may be overfilled, but that's not the oil in the line.
line problem that's, that causes all their problems. And in another LP video, I'll go in through purging of tanks and the conditions that your RV might reveal if your propane cylinders were not purged properly. A lot of problems with that. And um, so anyway, hey guys, thanks for watching. And um, you can support us on Patreon, all kinds of stuff. So just check us out on our website and um, down below we'll have some links for you. So thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Hope I didn't go too long and bore everybody to death. Okay. So this is Darren from Joyce Washington signing off until the next video. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.